Waiting for some of the The junior man, Mr. <laughs> Theory, uh, I've... Uh, okay, we do have on the Except agenda... The Yeah, 30 great. years ago. A letter for 30 friends years that you ago, we go I back. still deal with today. Okay. Okay. The, the, uh, I'd like to open the uh, planning board uh, meeting for May 20th. It's now 7.39. Uh, the first thing on our agenda, if um, everyone's interested, unless, unless you want to put it off when Jeff's here, is for uh, the board reorganization and the election of officers. Um, does anyone want to wait until we have a full board? I recommend we do. I think we do. Okay. We'll, we'll put that off then. <coughs> so let's look at a couple of things on new and old business because our first hearing is until 745. So Essex Street, review and endorse the Asbelts. What do, what do we have on that? I think everything's been satisfied. This is what was um, accepted at town meeting. And you guys were satisfied with everything? We went through it a couple of weeks ago and everything is fine. Yeah. Oh, all right. So does someone want to make a motion to endorse the uh, as-built street acceptance plan for Essex Street? I will move that we <coughs> endorse the as-built street acceptance plan for Essex Street. Dated, Dated March 3rd, 2014. Oh March 3rd, 2014. Yeah. Second? Second. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, okay. This is for notation. There was a revision date of May 8th. Oh, that's the date we want. Okay. <laughs> Edited. Amended yeah. accordingly. Okay. We'll amend that and we'll take a vote on the amendment. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> okay. All right. So sign that at your leisure. Board of Selectmen have already signed. Okay. Review and approve the site plan and special permit decision for 240 Dedham Street. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we're still waiting for uh, follow-up from the owner of that property on our report on uh, construction issues on the site. Okay. So we'll put that up. D you said schedule the next meeting. Do don't we have it scheduled for June 10th? Mm -hmm. Don't we have things already scheduled for June 10th? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's why I was wondering why we're scheduling the next meeting if we've already got one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Do we have any um, meeting minutes to review to to uh, vote we on? We have one. <coughs> oh, I think it may be in here. Let's let's see. Yes. We have. Um, <coughs> I move to accept the minutes of meeting of. Uh, Planning board on Tuesday, May 6th, 2014. As written. As written. <coughs> Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Correspondence. I don't think we've got any correspondence. Do we have any correspondence yeah. that we have to do? Uh, no. I just read the what correspondence that came in. There's nothing there. Oh, significant. Okay. We, we've got the Jane and Paul's farm thing, but they backed out. So, all right. <coughs> uh, there is see. one item that was in uh, the last set of correspondence we got. It's a uh, report from consultants on the uh, town water supply, and uh, Betsy will make copies and circulate it to all of us. <coughs> okay. There's also something that I thought was on the agenda that I don't see on here, and it has to do with the um, <coughs> uh, the pump station yeah, and. Actually, I put it on. I, I gave it a set time because somebody was. 825. Oh, oh, okay. All right. I actually spoke to Carlos Quintel, the engineer on the project, and he had a conflict, but requested if he could discuss it with the board at about 8:30. So. Oh, all right. I looked at it. It is awfully close, but well, the the issue is, I think that the 
requirements of in-store is that they have to have access to the front of the way they've got it positioned. Uh, they really can't do too much landscaping, unfortunately, right in front of the station. Yeah. So. <coughs> All right, so we got another minute to go. The um, T-Mobile decision, I need four um, members. Right. So... I skipped over that one. Yeah, we'll wait until Jeff is here next yep. time. We still have enough time. Well, Jeff was absent from the May 6th meeting, and that's the meeting it was voted on. No, the, the hearing closed on April 15th. It says you voted on the 6th, though. No. On T-Mobile? Oh, that might have been what the draft says, because I, when I drafted it, oh, I was yeah. anticipating it to be voted on the 6th. Oh. So okay. that just needs to be changed yeah, we'll to change. whatever date it ends up being voted. Oh, okay. I'll change the, the, the date. That's why I was checking the minutes to see if, but it pos what position I took on it. <laughs> <coughs> None. <laughs> All right. Counting down. I have seven forty-four. Um, schedule Two. the next meeting. Twenty-five. We, we did. Oh, you must have been chatting. I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, seven forty-five on mine. Okay. So, 106, 108 Main Street. Walter, that, um, We'd like to... Yeah, I am, I am going to open it. The problem that we have with this, uh, going forward with this, is it has been brought to our attention that... Um, that a residential alone um, uh, development can't go forward with the the changes that occurred at town meeting, and we cannot unless a, a special permit was in hand at the time. Um, so the um, and, and the and the date that it would have had to have been finished by would have been. The, the date of, of advertisement for the planning board hearing for the zoning change. So um, this, this is open, but I am letting you know that um, as far as we can see right now, this, this really can't go forward unless I can get some sort of a, an, an opinion from town council that says otherwise because it, it, uh, it does seem as though you would have had to have had y your special permit in hand to go forward with the residential, or the residential alone without having it as a mixed use. So d does anyone on the board have any comments? I uh, think okay. we probably should, since this is in question, probably just not go into detail on the plan and hold off until we know whether this should be a special permit in a hearing. Oh, absolutely. That, that's what I was saying, that we shouldn't, shouldn't go forward with it until we get an opinion from town yes. council that says whether or not absolutely. it can go forward. Because in opening it, you could be... Well, it, it's, it's a continuation of an uh, already open hearing. Okay. A special permit. <clears throat> Permit a special permit is a, a new hearing. A new, the PMLD, the PMLD is permit. new, it's but the right. hearing is open. The, the right. PMLD is in addition to the existing hearing so that's, that's ongoing. Open. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was so a new. you want me to read, you want to read this? It's been the added to it. Well, um, not the PMLD. Yeah. Not the PMLD, I don't think so. No, 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 we're no, not, not, not going to okay. start the, Understand. the new hearing yep. for that. Yep. So basically, all you can talk about is just discussion on the previous site plan that uh, uh, was left off at last time. Well, I, I, I think, let me see if, uh, yeah. would it be advisable, that, uh, would it be all right to discuss the prior site plan that we've already been reviewing? Uh, uh, well, two. Have you known whether or not that can be done? Two things. For, first, the PMLD 
hearing was advertised to open tonight so I, I would suggest that you do open it and continue it yeah without without getting into it but but yes uh, the hearing is open so you can on the other either one you can still discuss you know aspects <coughs> of it I'm confused hmm. we're going to continue the, the special permit for the PMLD that we're starting tonight we're that we're going to that. open it now and we're going to continue it to our next hearing and, and we should have an opinion but from time to any discussion then discussion has to be relative to the prior yeah I think you should open this and then continue that's what we're gonna go do all right so I should so <coughs> yeah, read that and we'll we'll continue it without discussion. notice is hereby given that in accordance with mass general law section 40a of the Norfolk zoning bylaws section f11 Public hearings will be held on Tuesday, May 20th, 2014 at 7.45 and 8 p.m. in the Norfolk Town Hall, 1 Liberty Lane, Norfolk, Massachusetts, relative to the properties located at 106 Main Street and 108 Main Street in Norfolk, Massachusetts. The applicants, the Michaela Realty Trust of Norfolk, Massachusetts, and the Pasture Development Group, LLC, are requesting special permits for planned multi-lot developments in the B1 outside the Business Core District. C section I.4.A.2 of the Norfolk Zoning Bylaws. The properties are located in the B1 Zoning District. Reference Assessor's Map 14, Blocks 56, Lots 7 and 8. The plan and application are available for public inspection in the Office of the Norfolk Planning Board during regular office hours. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to make a motion to continue the hearing to uh, June 10th at Hampton Road, let's say, cost to complete. 815? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So the, the PMLD discussion for the special permit has been continued to June 10th. We can discuss the, su the subdivision that's before us, or the site plan that's before us. You'd have to have the old plan, though, not the PMLD plan. Right. How, how different is the the, the, the plan from well, the... Well, we can uh, at least discuss the traffic study. Yeah, Absolutely. that's true. We can discuss the traffic study I think also. In, I think in the, uh, in the new plan for the PMLD, was the drainage not pushed down more to the 50-foot no-build zone? You well, you've, you've kind of thrown us a, a loss here right now. I know, I know. Well, there are some other things that we can discuss on it, um, and and part of that is um, parking. We were looking at the parking, and um, oh, microphones. <laughs> the um, uh, it's it seems to me as though th th there's not enough guest parking for what you've got. I checked out the buildings at the top of the hill to see what the uh, what the guest parking situation is for. They don't have a parking space for every unit, but they do have probably one for every two units. So that's probably not a bad ratio because when I was up there, a lot of those spaces were taken. So um, how many, rel uh, what percentage of spaces do you have for um, each unit now? Um, okay, so again, this is the PMLD plan. Um, well, it, it, it ha the layout of the buildings and everything hasn't cha changed. It's just the property lines that have changed. Is that correct? Correct. So um, what we're proposing was 24 units on 106 Main and we had a total of 12 visitor spaces, so that is one per that, that's, two. That's about the same as what's at the top of the hill. Right. Yep. And, and at this point, we, you know, it's something we can discuss further, but we've shown four in this area, four in this area, four in this area, just trying to randomly mm -hmm. disperse them across the site. Uh, and similarly, on 108 Main, with 18 units, um, we have a total of nine. Three here, three here, three up here. Um. All right. How much? How how far along are you with the Board of Health 
as far as your septic is concerned. Um, at this point, what we've done is come up with this alternative layout, and we were holding off on moving forward oh. with any of the detailed uh, drainage or septic design or proceeding further with conservation until we got um, uh, a certain sense of where we were with the density. So that was the real discussion we were hoping to have tonight was to come to some agreement on the density so that we could move forward with the detailed design. And in getting to that step, we did do uh, the traffic study, um, which I know and is- we'll, we'll discuss the traffic study. Sure, and we have Bill Scully with us here tonight, the traffic engineer who put that report together, if you'd like to hear a report from him. In terms of the, the conceptual design, did is it based on any, um, understanding of the soils you have there of the absolutely dirt rates sure so you know is it does this a sense of viability to it yes um, there's been a number of uh, soil tests that were done uh, previously by others and we did some additional uh, preliminary test pits out there um, we still need to do more uh, perk tests witnessed by the Board of Health I think you have um, a, I think you have a substantial amount of more testing you're doing we had asked you months ago we being kind come <laughs> I'm sorry yes and uh, I mean we have got a drainage here and I'm just my first meeting here but I did listen to the other ones and where the drainage still isn't even confirmed to be a two-foot separation I mean to me I would be reviewing the drainage to make sure that works and if the drainage doesn't work then the density change will follow after that mm -hmm. do the applicants know that I mean we asked for I would suggest you do test holes in the entranceway coming in uh, to, to build the roadway even though you're bringing it up three feet you still have to get down to a gravel base to start your road you've got soils between two ponds and wetland there's a good chance you dig down there and you never come to a solid gravel base which means you can't put a road there. I think this testing is substantial. I think the testing to put that 40-foot culvert in to find out how deep the footing's gonna go, whether you need piles, I mean, that's substantial. That's the entranceway to this project. And, I, and that's why I would suggest that, you know, before we even talk about density, find out if the, if the drainage works, because if the drainage doesn't work, everything else has to follow on that. And when our consultant comes up and says, I can't guarantee there's a two-foot separation, wow, I mean, that's a problem. And you're also in the Charles River Watershed District, and we have them petitioning us saying that we don't want any runoff into the ponds. And I look at this recently, and you're pushing the drainage more and more into the no-build zone, which gives the, the applicants issues on other boards when we were told it was going to be kept out. So it seems like... Uh, I my suggestion would be to to focus on the drainage do the test holes where your drainage is going to go there should be two test pits under every drainage tank see if you have a separation the manufacturers say if it's two feet or less it doesn't work and this board would have the option to decide if it's two feet and five inches the five inches make a project drain as compared to not drain so I mean to me that's pretty crucial and I I would suggest that you get this done and you know nobody wants to spend money on, a, on uh, return but to me the whole project base is on that and if you find it doesn't work you may have an alternative to modify some of this plan so that the thing does work but still we stand here with a chance that a roadway can't be built through those ponds that's still a chance so I, I'd like to know that before these people waste their money and we waste our time we, we have had a number of moving issues, and um, we've been working uh, to try to address these issues. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was our sense that the, the greatest concern uh, with the board was the density and the traffic mm -hmm. studies, which is what we've gone ahead to try to address. Um, we had done some other engineering based on the previous site layout that Mr. Houston did review. Um, and again, with some edits and the additional um, 
hydrogeological studies that um, yeah. would be required. We're comfortable that we can design a drainage system yeah. that will. Well, being being comfortable and having the standards. board's consultant say there's not a two foot separation, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I guess you can move forward how you like. If you want to address the density and totally ignore the drainage, which is the main part of the project, that's up to you. But so so you understand as you as you move forward here as far as the density goes, and I know that's the uh, the elephant in the room, but. We have a 40B project up the Meeting House Road, which way back when, when we were designing the lower 40B, this is what we wanted it to look like. And I, I think Peter knows that, Mashib, I, I wasn't informed then, which is units spread around the pond with the parking in the back. And uh, we have a project up on the hill, the Meeting House Road project, and, and that has 2.6 units per acre. We have a low income uh, subsidized housing project on our road that was built 50 years ago. That's 2.0 units per acre. As this stands now, if you get credit for the wetlands and the ponds, this is at double the density, 4.7. And you got an area here with a mounding water table, which was really hard to diagnose. If you take out the ponds and you take the density up in those houses, you're talking triple the density of everything in town. And you're doing that in a wetland area. So I don't know, it just seems to me, again, I'm, I'm new on this. This is my first time. But I did have listened to the meetings. And uh, I think the drainage, and make sure you do have egress. You have the other problems with one egress and no emergency access. Yeah, you've got a whole bunch of things here to work on. And I, I think you're probably you're starting up at the top and working down, or I would work at the, from the bottom and work up. <coughs> But again, it's your project. You know, you want to start talking about density and do that later, and uh, that's that's not my call. Okay. Well, that's kind of why I brought up the whole issue of the um, uh, your your septic <laughs> is because everything's going to impact the the density of this area. S so, you know, we keep going around in circles when we have all these little outstanding issues. Now, one of the issues, of course, was the, the, the uh, traffic study, and we will go over that. But all these other issues have been brought up, the, the whole drainage issue and the septic. Everything's been brought up before, but, you know, we haven't seen any hard numbers on anything. So we don't really know whether or not it can be even support the numbers that are here. I mean, if, like, um, like you said, if, 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 if you can't get the drainage in there, then the density is going to have to drop just because you can't have that much impervious sur uh, surface. So, you know, we, we're going to have to see something in order to um, in order to review it as it exists. Okay. Um, again, um, based on the preliminary work that we've done, mm -hmm. I'm fairly comfortable that we can put together a drainage system, and it may require changing elevations or um, you know, rearranging some things in a minor way, but um, we believe we can get a drainage system and septic systems to work on site. All right. Well, Let's see if there are any other comments from the board. Walter, do you have any? Uh, <coughs> no, you've covered, we'll, we'll cover the traffic uh, shortly, so I'll, I'll hold until that. <coughs> Andrea, do you have anything to add? Well, I've heard conflicting statements about um, whether the wetland areas were included in the density in calculating the base density. And I just wanted to, I wanted to understand that. Um, the zoning bylaw, my take is in reading the bylaw is that the wetland area is not excluded from the total lot area. It is to be included in the lot area, right. is your interpretation. Right. But we also um, have a calculation shown on this right. plan it, where yeah. we exclude the wetland in the 100-foot buffer zone um, and still show that, um, again, these are broken into individual lots, but there's on the three-acre site, the total area of upland, which excludes, again, the 100-foot buffer zone, um, 
is still about two and a half acres. So there's still sufficient area there to site the units. Yeah, I, I did take a look at the plan that they sent over today and the 5,000 square feet per unit actually works with upland area only on the lots accepting their delineation of upland. So, you know, the, the um, there's like eight units and 40 some odd thousand square feet of, of upland. So it, it does work not including the wetland area with respect to the 5,000 square foot per, per unit. Uh, you know, for the sake of um, showing my ignorance, why would a subdivision yield plan not include wetlands? And his, uh, his interpretation of zoning here be allowed to include uplands, or be allowed to include wetlands. So in a normal yield plan, we would not include wetlands. So why would anybody interpret the zoning differently here? Because what you, I think what you're thinking of is the yield plan the for yield plan for our subdivision right. this is not a subdivision no I understand that and the zoning the zoning bylaw as he said has a density requirement or, or had a density requirement one unit <coughs> for 5,000 acres there was not there was not an exclusion for wetlands though though it sounds it sounds like Tom confirmed that even if you did exclude the wetlands it still meets that can we put that on the checklist of things to address <coughs> um, the minimum lot size in the PMLD is only 8,000 square feet. And they've got 40 some odd thousand square feet of upland plus mm -hmm. additional wetland in each of the, uh, I think except lot one, which is like 25,000 square feet or something, but they're, they're substantially in excess of the eight. So I think with respect to the minimum lot size and with respect to the 5,000 square feet per unit, they meet that with the available upland. It, there's there might be some new zoning proposed in this area and it would certainly make sense to me if we only include buildable area in the calculations going forward <coughs> anything else <coughs> I've you know I have got a more than a zillion questions, but that's well, because we'll bring up some of them. If um, well, it's just that it, I did not have the benefit of um, sitting on the board when you know these presentations were made. So, you know, when when people say the outstanding issues are septic drainage, the roadway concept, traffic study, having only one egress, and the density, I mean, what more can you bring up? It can bring up snow. <laughs> okay, yeah. it's true. Well, That's been brought up. <laughs> well, yeah, no. well, the fact the fact of the matter is, on this plan, uh, you can't plow the snow into the wetlands. So you basically have a 500 foot driveway that you have to push snow down. So if you're pushing a foot of snow down a 500 foot driveway, you get 12,000 cubic feet of snow that has to go someplace. So where does it go? Where does it go? Are areas on site that the snow removal areas could be provided? You think for? that's going to accommodate all the snow? But you should, if you do, that's fine. But you should have calculations to show where the snow's going. Unfortunately, uh, you get a dense project like this. The, s the snow comes into effect when you have a 20 foot ro 22 foot roadway. <laughs> On a normal winter, like we had last year, the winter before, you've got three feet of snow over cutting the curb. So you got a 16-foot roadway. You got tandem parking, and you got people parking on the street. You got one person parking on the street. There's barely room to get by. So you know it's uh, the, s the snow when you when when you pack them in like this becomes a big issue. That and drainage. So I don't know. Just something you might want to address because you do have to find a place to put it. So. Um. I think everybody's right. It's a complex project. We've known that from day one. I think that the, the development has been reshaping itself to respond to the complexities and issues that we've raised. I feel like we've talked quite a bit about the entrance road. We've talked quite a bit about traffic and the need for the traffic study, so I'm anxious to dive into that. We've talked about emergency egress and flow and circulation, and we have talked a little bit about snow. I, I do feel like we haven't really 
gotten into any detail on drainage or septic as, as you've talked about those have kind of been you know parked for a little while but uh, I guess the only thing before going into the traffic study I want to hear is I, I thought I heard you say relative to drainage and septic that you feel pretty confident through the preliminary calculations and reviews you've done that those are feasible given the density that you've proposed. I, I want to clarify if that's what you said or not because I do feel like it would be a mistake to not consider those two things relative to the density because as with all the other issues as we've been talking about it the density absolutely has to respond to the site conditions and the environmental sensitivities of the site conditions. so if we're going down a path where we're going to review all these other complex issues and then in the end mm -hmm. you know we haven't thought of these two really big driving factors they all really do you know it's I, I don't think it would be right to kind of park two things but so I guess I'm just curious and not to go into in any level detail because I know you're not prepared to but do you feel confident that those two things are, are achievable? Because I'd hate for us to spend a lot more time on this plan if it's going to be <laughs> changed again. And it, you don't really want you don't really want his like his his verbal assurance. You want you want to or do you want to do you want to know well, why well, he thinks uh, that? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, mean, I guess your verbal assurance is just your verb. It's just your word, right? Understood. Well, I don't think he's verbal assurance. I mean, he's, a, my he's past the PE, experience. and he's yeah. going to give his yeah, verbal no. assurance based on so something. We have no, we What's have it based no, on? We have no right, plan. What's it based Excuse on? me for if I'm you know, talking. Do we have any plan that's been reviewed yet? Well, if we can back up a little bit on the history of the how we got to this point, we initially filed a site plan with a fairly similar layout there was a looped road here and then a single cul-de-sac yeah, where the uh, <coughs> homes were uh, double loaded uh, I could show that plan if you'd like but um, and with that layout we did a very detailed um, drainage septic designs um, and we had everything laid out we got comments from mr. Houston um, it was asking for additional uh, soil testing which we know needs to be done um, and but the big question at that point was the density and the concern about the traffic so we've tried to address that to this point we've scaled down the number of units um, we changed the the general layout of the site based on comments from the planning board uh, previously one of the mr. Plumbo who's not here right now so we've made changes along the way to try to to get to a final point but we've held off on doing another round of detailed um, drainage and septic studies until we had the board's um, agreement uh, regarding the density so that's but we've scaled down the number of units but that was my question how, how can you get an agreement in density when nobody knows the drainage <laughs> I couldn't give you one well, we previously had a layout that where we oh, I know, you know, I know. we now, generally yeah, and that's what Mr. Houston said there wasn't a two-foot water separation he could assure so that's where I stand coming in here so uh, I don't know may maybe somebody else can but I can't comment on on density if I don't know if the drainage works and how how marginal it is or whether it's it's enough to accommodate these units easily then to me it have a better a better case if you if you prove that the drainage worked properly which is why you look at the planning board rules and regulations on every initial submittal the application to be completed has to have the three copies of the drainage studies that go all the town boards and the reason probably for that is drainage is probably the most crucial part of a subdivision design it's the most difficult it's the most technical and it's the thing that matters the most and we're just talking about sketches here well we don't know if the, we don't know if he can build the roadway to the houses we don't know if the culvert is even buildable correct me if I'm wrong and uh, we don't know if the water is going to just flood up if these underground tanks even work and that was from my last comment from uh, Tom Houston when I was listening in so that's where I stand right now so comment on density without knowing that seems premature well let's let's delve into the traffic study <coughs> let's Good take idea. a look at that Good idea. so I started to read it Tom <coughs> But it was very, very long, and you sent a summary. Now, why don't you give us a summary of your summary? 
<laughs> because I read about eight pages of your summary, and I said I'll have him summarize it later. And I, I'm, I'm sure you found it fascinating, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. But um, did we want to let Mr. Scully, the um, the author of the report, oh, uh, absolutely, make his presentation first, maybe, and then I can comment on it. So. <clears throat> Thank you. <coughs> uh, for the record, my name is William Scully, um, representing Green International Affiliates uh, tonight. We completed the traffic study for. Is this on? It's on. Uh, we completed the traffic study for the project. <coughs> and you only had one more page, I think, to go in Tom's <laughs> summary. <laughs> and you gave up early. Um, so uh, I'm going to briefly summarize our analysis, um, and we're starting with from the point of you can get 42 units, and you can build a roadway. So I'm starting with all those as a given um, as we go through ours. Um, we um, we conduct the traffic we conduct the traffic impact studies so that. <coughs> So your microphone doesn't amplify. The microphone the doesn't room. amplify. It's for it, home. Okay. You, you may want to move forward a little bit if you're having a hard time hearing. I'll uh, I'll try to speak up. Um, we conducted the traffic impact studies uh, in general to um, to do a couple of things to help us understand the conditions on the abutting roadways that are going to serve a project uh, to understand how much traffic uh, and the characteristics of that traffic would uh, result from the particular project. And then we determine that incremental impact that a, uh, the traffic impact, uh, you know, the traffic generation will have in terms of change in volume, change in operations um, on the abutting street system. And then uh, and determine its access characteristics. Uh, is the access drive going to work uh, well? Um, are there special needs of the, of the project? or potentially mitigation, whether it's uh, near the project or a little bit off-site. Um, we follow a pretty much a standard approach uh, at several steps. We um, collect data and uh, do our inventories to start with. The data will include a series of traffic counts. Uh, we, in this case, we uh, had developed a uh, study scope, a study area, and I know uh, Tom had reviewed it and, and provided the board as well as the applicant some guidelines and guidance on some additional issues uh, to address, so we took that into account. Um, and some of that, I would say, goes a little bit beyond what we would normally do. Um, we get into forecasting traffic, so we project out into the future, um, both with and without the project, and that gives us the ability to then measure that incremental impact of a no build versus a build. Um, and then the, uh, all the analysis is done, again, using some standard models, standard procedures um, to test traffic flow. Uh, we look at the site distances uh, with respect to the site access point. Um, and in this case, again, we looked at some other things like the parking and some of the large vehicle movement uh, potentially within the site. Uh, that I'll touch upon. And then in, in this case, we, we ended up with a series of recommendations uh, to consider if the project uh, moves forward as currently uh, laid out. Um, we collected, we started up uh, the study during the latter part of April and early part of May, wrapping it up in the last week or two. Um, data was collected uh, again the last week of April, the first week of May. Uh, we looked at, um, <coughs> I'll take a couple of, uh, couple of things from the report just to illustrate. Um, so this is a map of the area. It was figure one in the report. Uh, just for orientation, my orientation, uh, we've got the project on, uh, on Main Street, or just off Main Street. Main Street coming through, and we've got Rockwood going up towards the upper left corner of the, of the board, Union Street coming down. Seekonk Street is over on the right side of the, of the map. And we looked at, again, endpoints of 
our site access point coming in the middle on Main Street. So we looked at the Seekonk Street intersection with Main as NM Point on the east side, and then we looked at the Rockwood Union Main intersection on the west side. Um, we focus on, typically on a residential project, we'll focus <coughs> on morning peak period, afternoon peak period, uh, coinciding typically with the commuter uh, periods. Um, we also did a machine count. You might have seen uh, that on Main Street to give us a sense of uh, daily volume and how it fluctuates over the day. Uh, with that piece of information, we are, are able to also collect speed information and, and other information on uh, the Main Street traffic mm -hmm. characteristics. Uh, as part of our inventory, we also review um, safety aspects. As I said, we do measurements on Main Street. We look at site visibility from the proposed site drive, approaching it or leaving it. Uh, we look at the uh, recent crash record at the two study intersections on either side of our uh, project. And, uh, and that starts to define our existing conditions. Um, as we go into the future, we uh, project out seven years now. It used to be five. We go out seven. Um, so we're studying an estimated 2021 condition. Uh, we use a background growth. So in this case, we, we incorporate a small uh, amount of uh, added traffic, uh, trying to take into account some of the vacant space that's up into the center. Um, so th and that provides a, uh, a future no-build condition. Um, and then we project traffic for the project itself. Uh, estimates of uh, projects like this, we base largely on models that uh, have been developed or published by the Institute of Transportation <coughs> Engineers, uh, who have collected and compiled data of actual building projects over the last 40, 50 years or so. And we've developed models for a number of different land uses, including single family residential. Uh, so we'll start with that uh, to estimate the number of trips that could be generated by a project like this. We'll do the daily and the, the peak hour, morning, peak hour, and the afternoon. Um, with this location uh, being where it is, uh, and you got the train station right there, we also did look at some uh, information from historical census data, the work trip data of um, uh, Norfolk resident use of public transportation, commuter rail, uh, and you also see, um, you know, data on <coughs> likely walk or bike type trips for that work trip. Um, they're all they're both relatively uh, small based on the the data that we've seen and and can can review. Um, in, in total, uh, I think it's a it's probably around ten percent of work trips of residents uh, using public transportation walk or bike. Uh, and because of that, um, and, w and Gary, I mean the location, well, y you got to sort of look at it, in, I at least from my point of view, two different ways. W one is it really is in a pretty good location if the goal is have a residential area that I can walk to town hall, I can walk to church, I can walk to the coffee shop, I can walk to the train. Uh, there's a lot of positiveness uh, with respect to its location for those reasons. Um, what we did, however, uh, for the analysis was we did not assume any reduction in vehicle uh, estimates based on that type of a condition. Uh, ITE models, they are typically developed from suburban locations, Norfolk suburban, However, in locations that really don't have a lot of transit available um, and not in a, an environment that encourages a lot of the, the walk trips and the bike trips. So while... Are you saying that your calculations are the worst case scenario? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. So, um, and, and the, the, other, the thing that I also wanted to mention with that trip reduction, yes, you do have the potential to reduce the peak hour traffic, the commuter trip. But because of its location, you really have an opportunity to reduce just the non-work trip, the day trips during the day. Um, so it's not the work trip necessarily. So you could see potentially a reduction in all these, the daily trip as well as the peak hours. Uh, but anyway, so this, this table is in the report. It's based on the IT models, no reduction in trips. 
and we're estimating uh, 39 uh, peak hour vehicle trips in the morning, 48 uh, vehicle trips in the afternoon. In the morning, as everyone would guess, uh, most of your trips are leaving, going to work. And in the afternoon, the majority is coming back. In the afternoon is that late afternoon, between 4 and 6 p.m. Uh, granted, it's a little bit more balanced because you have other things happening at that time of day. Um, so we would um, use those forecasts, and then we begin to look at, well, how, is, how would we estimate or expect traffic to enter and leave the site? Uh, where would they go? Uh, and in this case, we used um, the existing traffic patterns in the area to give us, give us that sense. Um, and with that, we ended up with uh, a fair amount of traffic, probably in the 30 to 35 percent range, to and, to and from the north from the site, and about 30 to 40 percent of the traffic to and from the east, and then the rest is either uh, heading west towards Franklin or, or south down uh, Union, and a, a, even a little bit on, on Needham side, going to the, to the south. Um, we develop our forecasts, uh, we add the traffic up uh, based on those percentages. We develop a network of volume, which is in the report. This is, um, I think it's figure six in the report. And from this, this is just detailed numbers. Uh, here's our site drive, here's the Seekonk intersection, here's the Rockwood intersection. And, and you'll see in the report, very detailed, um, an estimate of how much traffic we add to each movement at each intersection. So, for an example, our site drive in the morning, most of our traffic is exiting the site. So you'll see up here we've got 16 vehicles estimated to come down and turn left on Main Street, 13 vehicles to come down and take a right on Main Street. As I said, morning, most leaving, and uh, so very minor movements entering the site uh, in the morning peak hour. In the afternoon, again, uh, we've got, um, it, it works out about 45% to the, to the west, 55% to the east before you get to Seekonk or Rockwood. So you got a little bit more coming in, take a right, then a left in, and a little bit more leaving the site, heading east, then west. Um, so we, we go through all those uh, details and we analyze the intersections. Um, and what we found is that uh, during the peak periods, uh, the project itself is, and you can see from these numbers, um, put these numbers back up. <coughs> you can see they're relatively small numbers over the course of an hour. Um, so it's less than a vehicle per minute uh, added to the roadway network in both peak periods. And, and as you distribute over the network, 55% or so going to the east, 45 to the west. That number begins to get smaller and smaller. And then they get to Seekonk, some take a left, some keep going through. Uh, and the same thing at the Rockwood intersection. Um, so it, it, as you get away from the area on Rockwood, on Seekonk, on Union, you see uh, relatively minimal or small increases in traffic uh, during the peak times. Uh, the tables in the report, the numbers are in the report, they show uh, probably 2% or less uh, of an increase during the peak hours on those streets. And again, that's with no reduction in, uh, in anything due to either walking or biking uh, to commute rail or the center. Um, operating conditions, uh, intersection, how much delay is incurred uh, uh, by a vehicle entering onto the main street or entering entering from the main street. And the analysis showed a very small change in, in delay. Uh, virtually no change really in measurable um, operating condition. We did see the Seekonk intersection currently experiences some delay exiting Seekonk or exiting Needham to cross or turn onto Main Street. You know, and in the future, with or without this project, you know, those are going to inc increase a little bit because of uh, just a general increase in traffic. Um, the roundabout is functioning fine. Um, I drive through it an awful lot. I, I, I live in the area. Um, and I know that there's been discussion and issues uh, talked about uh, with traffic in the center. Uh, the train comes, the gate goes down, and lo and behold, 
we have to stop. Um, you know, and that's probably that's the negative of having a nice train station in the center of town. Um, um, but the, the gate's not down long. Um, there is queuing on. Well, if I'm on Rockwood heading north, I'm going to have to stop for the, the gate. Um, it doesn't stay down long, and it clears out pretty efficiently. Um, the analysis of the of that roundabout, of that intersection, with the project, it showed it just it's going to continue to operate just fine. Uh, very small change in in conditions. Um, I, th I was I was here when the debate was going on whether that should be a signal or you know, going to a roundabout, and it's it's uh, again what 10, 15 years old and. And it moves traffic through. Um, the site distance at the site drive is, is um, excellent. Main Street is straight and level in that section. Um, in terms of operating conditions, uh, leaving the site drive, um, we found a level of service C, in, I think, in both AM and PM, um, which is uh, fairly short delays. So traffic can get out of there. Going in is, is easy, level of service A. Um, and that was with a single approach drive. Um, I'm not positive, I think, I think maybe in Tom's scope, there was an, a question of should that approach be widened to have a left and a right turn lane. I would suggest no. Uh, it doesn't need it. Um, and it keeps the pedestrian crossing that uh, drive uh, shorter. And as you well know, I mean, people do park, let's say, in the old town hall and walk up to the commuter rail. So they do use that sidewalk. Um, uh, let's see, what else? Um, parking, I guess, is one topic. Um, and, and I think you touched upon it uh, earlier with the number of visitor spaces, about <coughs> one per <coughs> two units, seems to be consistent. A and I'll tell you, I mean, in general, and, and it's been a little while since I've been before this board, but uh, single family residential subdivi subdivisions is, it's fairly atypical to be discussing parking in those type projects. Uh, um, we find them in a lot of other types of land uses, but not, not these. So um, what we saw was, um, you know, you have the driveway and garage per unit. You have the visitor spaces. You've got 105 parking spaces available, not counting any potential spaces on street. Um, and a average demand of, a, I think, about 77 or 80 parking spaces that we estimate. Now, sure. On an occasion, that can be more than that. You see that. I mean, not every not every house has visitors on every holiday, but some do. Um, but on uh, in general, um, I would conclude that the available parking is adequate to meet meet that um, uh, demand. Uh, we did identify some areas on street that could accommodate parking. Uh, we did make recommendations related to that of uh, limiting parking to one side of the street only. Um, and staying away from intersecting roadways within the, uh, the subdivision. And I think Tom's comments either reiterated that or gave it a little bit more definition. And, and based on his and our uh, review of that, you know, we're estimating that you could probably comfortably allow 30, about 35 spaces or accommodate 35 on-street spaces on top of what is provided with the visitor spots in the, in the houses. Um, we looked at the large vehicle movement, fire truck and single unit, 30-foot uh, truck going through, which would be, you know, a typical trash hollow truck. Um, and they can circulate within that site, um, even on the 22-foot uh, uh, wide roadways. Um, and, and when you get to an intersecting way, they might have to swing around, and that's one reason why you would not have parking near those intersecting ways. Intersecting ways being, as an example, you know, down in here, where you have one roadway going pretty much along the, the railroad tracks, and then you have Drive D coming down. So you know, you'd want to give enough room to have a uh, large vehicle be able to swing out and around. And with the 22 feet and no parking right at the corners, uh, can be accommodated. And we've included those. Uh, drawings in the appendix of the report. Uh, we also tested out here at the main drive and, and that can be accommodated as well. Um, our understanding is that this would um, be uh, private 
so we would not expect you know school buses to be circulating through here uh, there is a sidewalk coming down the main drive in in the no parking we've recommended no parking on the main drive um, but you have a sidewalk you have a sidewalk along main street so there could be uh, uh, waiting for school bus you know at the corner so we've talked about having a little bit of a pad out there just adjacent to the sidewalk nothing nothing major but instead of kids either uh, waiting in the road or blocking the main street sidewalk there'd be a little bit of a spot where they could be off the um, off the corner there and um, let's see if there's anything else Um, you know, basic things for the site drive in terms of being stop controlled, uh, having it signed and striped, uh, maintaining uh, the site visibility. Uh, so you'd have basically site triangles and just any landscaping would be low or set back. Uh, you, probably not in the report. I was thinking of this tonight was you know, just we'll have to have a crosswalk to uh, across the driveway connecting the two corners of the sidewalk on Main Street as well. And I'll stop there and might be easier to answer questions well I was curious about the um, the level of service at Seekonk and 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 um, mm -hmm. and uh, Needham uh, along Main Street there yeah I mean that's it's an intersection that was showing up with some delays um, <coughs> it's unsignalized as you know stop control on both Needham and, and the Seekonk approaches um, in the morning I think it uh, I should double check but one of the periods it did go from we had an increase of maybe <coughs> like six seconds delay, and it went from uh, E to an F, which is, it was pretty close, high E, very low F. Um, the other approach in the other period, it remained E. Um, so there was no change from the, uh, the no-build condition. So that you do have that, and that's seven down years down the road. Um, I didn't look at... Um, anything that you would really do there. Um, I think Tom did mention in his review uh, it's unlikely to meet signal warrants at that location, which I would tend to agree. Um, I know you kind of constrain on the corners, so, you know, in, so in entering, entering, I should, all of those numbers reflect the exiting. So the entering Seekonk, entering Needham from Main Street is, is easy. Um, yeah, sometimes what you'll do in a, a situation like that is to cut in a right turn lane or something something to alleviate some approach like here you got 58 right turns but I think you can strain on the corner to really do that easily I mean we can take a look but I think it's uh, it, it may not be a feasible action to do yeah. go right ahead <coughs> well uh, to add to that as I recall reading the report mm -hmm. <coughs> there was some mention of accident rates there and also up at the uh, rotary could you comment on that please yes um, so as part of our crash research, we'll look at um, we'll look at the number of crashes. We get the data from uh, MassDOT. We look at three years of data, and uh, um, and in doing so, we saw in three years we had, I believe, seven reported crashes at the Rockwood Main intersection, and ten crashes at the Seekonk intersection. Um, so it averages about 3 to 3.3 .3 crashes reported every year, which in general is a fairly low number. Um, Seekonk, it actually was, I think the first year data was six reported, and then two successive years were two each. Um, so it seems to be, if there was something unusual that first year, it seems to have corrected itself or, or something was done to, to alleviate and bring that down. Um, but what we also do is we start to look at how much volume is going through an intersection so you get some relative sense and then we compare that to the, the averages the state sees at unsignalized intersections in this case and they do the same thing for signals um, in the roundabout the calculated crash rate was coming in much lower than the uh, state average Seekonk was coming in higher um, and and sometimes what you get is when you're because what what happens at this intersection is there's a peak peaking occurring in the morning and the afternoon in the off peak the volumes come way down and on all segments so overall you have a fairly 
the low, low to moderate volume out there, and sometimes what that'll do is skew the calculation. Um, but, you know, that said, the crash rate did come in higher. Um, we looked at the data. Uh, there's, you know, the, the average is less than five per year. So it, it does not appear to us, unless there's some, some overriding factor and something <coughs> maybe you notice every day. I, I mean, it could be visibility that, you know, there's no warning that the intersection's coming up and, and someone exiting Seekonk uh, isn't seen. Well, the, the, uh, the intersection is not a, a set of 90 degree uh, angles. So mm -hmm. <coughs> True. Coming out of Seekonk, uh, it, it's, the street's got to bow back and there's a house right on the corner with a big bush and it's difficult mm -hmm. to inch out so that you can see up Main Street. You can see the other direction over the over the wall of the uh, cemetery, but in the other direction right, it's right. somewhat difficult. Right, and someone <coughs> approaching. I mean, not only do they not see someone approaching, someone approaching may not see them right. until. So, uh, you know, I mean, that's something, uh, I mean, I'll be happy. I take a drive down there and look. By the time I get on Seekonk, I'm way down <laughs> the sea, off of Cleveland. So um, I can take a look at that. I mean, it might be something simple. Um, and I don't remember if the town has the ability, some towns have the ability that if vegetation and bushes are growing within the, s the town layout and having an effect on visibility, <coughs> you do have the ability to go in and trim back to improve it. There's also... Those are old streets. I don't think the layout's very wide. Uh, Main Street might be. There. Main know. Street might. Um, and, and you also have the ability to supplement with signage, you know, just warning, you know, people approaching it that, you know, there's an intersecting way. Because sometimes also in, veg in summer season, you know, you lose the intersection. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes a sign can help uh, by reminding. But that's something that you know, we can look just to see if there's a simple fix there. This, this additional information is fascinating, but we really should tie it back to the development. And, and what, your, what, what your conclusion is, is that the amount of traffic that's added during the peak periods is l about or less than one car per minute. Is that correct? At, at the peak periods. That's correct. I, I think you said yeah, once every, oh, I, I thought, it, oh, 49 trips an hour. We got 48, 48 in the p.m. Oh, okay. and 39. So if my math is right, that's less than a vehicle right. per minute. Um, and in the off-peak, it'll obviously drop down a little bit. And, and again, this is with no reduction. You do have, and no one says you're going to reduce because of all those factors, but you certainly are in a great location for that opportunity. Um, and, and the total traffic that's going by here during that, that, uh, the period of time that those numbers were taken, what's the total number of vehicles that are going back, back and forth? So on Main Street under the future bill, so this is adding in future growth. Mm -hmm. So we're talking going past the site drive about 950 cars in the morning and about 870 in the afternoon. So that's 2021. Um, and it'd be a little bit less than that today. So the analysis show that the traffic can enter and exit this site with the, based on the amount of traffic generated and the volume on Main Street. Um, the analysis did show, yes, obviously it's going to have increases, but it's going to be very small increases in traffic at, at the two intersections. Those increases will uh, dissipate as you get through these intersections, and then the operating condition isn't going to change uh, substantially. In fact, in, in probably most of the case, a particular driver at these intersections would not even notice the, the potential change. It looks like a 5% increase is uh, just well, it crudely the calculated. It's, it's a little bit bigger here, uh, and then as you go onto the side streets, and the calculations are right in the uh, table. Four point one. So we've got uh, east of the project on Main Street, three point three percent in the afternoon and two point three percent in the morning. And then again, as I said, once you get to the intersections, then it just dissipates, and you're a percent or less on all the different legs. 
Tom, is there anything that you wanted to add to this? Because, because you had your extensive review, and then you brought up a couple of additional points, I think, when you were going over his data. Yes. Um, I've had occasion to review Mr. Scully's uh, work on numerous occasions, and he's both experienced and competent, so we didn't find a lot of technical errors anywhere in the study. The one issue that I had with respect to technical type of things was the distribution and assignment of trips. Uh, work, uh, morning and evening peak hour trips are typically associated with work trips and what we prefer to see is the trips distributed and assigned to the network based upon uh, census data, journey to work uh, data. Uh, the approach that was used here was to assign the trips based upon the existing traffic volumes. The way to look at that is you sort of draw a line, like a cordon line around the traffic study area, and you assign based upon the existing ratios of trips crossing that line. I think that kind of falls apart here because there's kind of a major destination, which is the train station in the middle of the study area. So that sort of skews the, the cordon approach. The other thing that I didn't, um, that I was concerned about was uh, all the trips were assigned according to the trips leaving the study area in the morning peak hour only as opposed to considering both in and out and morning and evening. So our recommendation there was to redo the assignment and distribution. I think that's just kind of a technical correction. The volumes here are not of the magnitude that a change of a few cars on an intersection approach is measurably going to affect intersection operations. But I'd like to just see it corrected just so we have a uh, uh, a completely accurate record uh, before the um, before the board. The substantive issue maybe I had was with um, the peak uh, parking demand. Um, there is a little variability there. The um, ITE parking generation manual, which is what everybody uses because it's kind of the industry standard. It's not one of the stronger publications that ITE puts out, and by way of example, uh, their database for um, single-family residential, which is an extremely common land use, I think there's only six studies nationally, and the average number of houses in the development was only 6.3. So it's maybe not the best of data sources. Uh, what Mr. Scully and his team used was the average rate, and you do get 77 parking spaces. But on the same page, there is an equation, and if you plug the same 42 units into the equation, you get 126 parking spaces as opposed to 77. So the point is it's probably accurate, but not a precise forecaster uh, of the number of parking spaces required. But that kind of assumes that there are 42 units and people will park anywhere. These aren't common parking fields. There's only two spaces per unit and somebody's not going to park in somebody else's driveway. So uh, there would be the issue that some people are going to park either in the reserve spaces that are shown or simply on the side of the road. And uh, uh, I had talked to Mr. Scully. We concur that um, Parking should be restricted on one side of all these driveways. Um, and that works pretty well on the 108 Main Street uh, site because the roadways are loaded only on one side, so you have the entire other side of the roadway that you can park on. And I'd suggest that's where the parking is because that way you're not blocking sight distance from people coming out of the individual unit driveways. The cars are parked on the other side of the street. but. On the 106 site, it's a little more difficult uh, because um, there are only a few spaces along the driveways there where there's enough space between the individual unit driveways to park. So, uh, you know, uh, that distance still is only about 25 feet. And if you figure the car is 16 feet long, there's only about four to five feet uh, clear from a parked car to either driveway. So that could be a bit of a sight distance problem. 
But over and above that, I think that we have to figure out a way to enforce parking regulations on this site because there aren't that many on the 106 site near the units. So as opposed to parking where they should be in the remote locations, they're going to tend to park on this, maybe on both sides of the streets. Uh, we clearly don't want that to happen. We want no parking uh, on the main drive in and out of the site. So part of the uh, homeowners association documents, uh, hopefully somebody can devise a mechanism for really enforceable uh, parking uh, <coughs> prohibitions. So um, I think the parking can be made to work, but enforcement of parking prohibitions is an important aspect of that. Uh, and we came up with some recommendations for uh, limiting parking. One of them, and I don't know whether it would overly uh, impinge upon their ability to sell the units, but uh, one thing I was thinking of, you could restrict the maximum vehicle ownership to two vehicles per, per unit. According to the parking generation manual, the same one that was used to forecast the parking, about 18% of suburban households have three uh, vehicles or more per household. So I if you have two parking spaces and three or more vehicles, that's kind of an inherent uh, a problem. It probably is based on number of bedrooms. The ITE manual alludes to that, but it doesn't break it down that way. Uh, I think the average number of bedrooms they studied was two point something, about 2.3, but they don't break it down by bedroom. Uh, as I say, in fact, it's not a great data source because there's only six studies that comprise it as opposed to the trip generation manual, which has hundreds for, uh, uh, for a single family residential. So um, with respect to mitigation, uh, I think the roundabout and the uh, site driveway uh, have good levels of service, and I don't think mitigation is really required there. Uh, Seekonk and Needham at Main Street, that, that, that's just a mess. Um, uh, the real problem there is not the traffic that's generated by this project. It's the crossing traffic. There's a very substantial cross volume from Needham to Seekonk and Seekonk to Needham. And that's what really does the level of service in there. Uh, in the uh, morning and evening peak hours, I recall, this project is only adding one vehicle northbound and one vehicle southbound on uh, Needham. And I think it's uh, in the one to four vehicle range for Seekonk. So it's a real problem. Uh, but um, this project isn't making it a great deal worse. And I don't know, other than maybe exploring, as Mr. Scully suggested, maybe a right turn on Seekonk or something, the intersection is not going to meet the warrants for signalization. You probably don't want a roundabout out there, so uh, it is a problem, but I don't think there's anything in the traffic engineer's toolbox that would measurably uh, upgrade levels of service or decrease uh, delay at that location. The site distance, both intersection site distance and uh, stopping site distance at the site driveway are fine. We did suggest that the uh, TIS uh, be modified to include a discussion on construction period traffic and maybe some mitigation measures like encouraging worker carpooling and van pooling or simply adjusting work hours to allow some workers to commute by the uh, commuter rail, maybe identifying some specific routes for heavy construction uh, vehicles. The um, final thing was on the large movement uh, analysis. Uh, Mr. Scully and his team uh, ran a fire truck and an SU-30 vehicle through the site. Uh, I'd like to see that uh, analysis redone with vehicles parked in the parking spaces uh, where they're proposed to be. And I'd also like to see the parking spaces, particularly on the 106 site, I'd like to see them marked I I physically after the thing is built, but I'd like to see those spaces on there and just make sure that the, uh, the large vehicles can still operate. It probably, as Mr. Scully said, you want to hold those vehicles back 
30 or 40 feet from the on-site intersections, no parking right at the intersections, and that should facilitate the vehicle turn. What is an so SV30? What is uh, an SU30? It's like a box truck, like a oh. FedEx truck oh, okay. or something like that, a, a trash truck, something in that size. Mr. Chair. Yes. Can I, I just... Uh, yep. Uh, you may nothing, certainly respond. Okay, nothing major. Um, uh, just so I can remember things. Um, we will, uh, we did look at the PM uh, on the trip distribution, so that was one of Tom's comments. Um, and and it wasn't in, we, when I got your report tonight, I, we were flipping through the appendix and didn't see it in there. Uh, but we did, did decide the trip distribution percentages. We were comfortable with the, what was reflected in the morning peak period. Um, and the only thing is, uh, yes, you can journey to work data and use that as a basis sometimes. Um, but you are making, you're making, I'll, I'll say, l logical guesses, you know, based on your knowledge of the area or your feel um, of, of route, <coughs> what the existing traffic patterns give you or the traffic volumes give you. And I, I agree with Tom in that, yes, we've got people coming to the train station or the parking lot. Uh, that could potentially influence some of that, um, although probably over the course of the hour, um, it's probably not as big an influence as it could be. Um, so those existing patterns reflect people's current desires of how they want to travel to get to Boston or get to Walpole or, or what have you. Um, so it's probably reasonable, but uh, we'll, we'll get the PM calculations over. And, and if we got to make some changes, fine. Um, what, what it showed was instead of 30% or 39% uh, going towards the east on Walpole, it might be 30%. So it's like instead of, as Tom said, it's going to be minor, a couple cars here and there. Instead of the 10 and 8 here, 10 lefts, 8 rights, you'd have 8 lefts, 10 rights. Um, that, that type of level of change. So um, we'll, get the, we'll get the information so that, and if we've got to do some supplemental, we'll, we'll do some supplemental. The parking... Um, the parking, uh, I mean, ITE collects a lot of information. And parking, some of the parking land uses, a lot of information. There isn't much information anywhere on parking for single family subdivisions because m probably mostly is no one ever worries about parking at single family because of usually the driveways and the garages and, and the streets and all that. Um, so that's why there's a probably a more of a limited amount of data. Uh, the average we calculated was the 77. Um, I'd have to look at the equation in there because sometimes there's a lot of um, worry of using some of the equations using six data points to develop it. Um, but even doing that with Tom's numbers and the visitor spaces and the potential on-street spaces and the driveway and the garages, we still exceed that, that number. Um, now, we did look at, and I think I am going along with what Tom's saying in terms of the parking. We looked at some of the straight sections um, of the internal roadway system um, where, where there were no driveways on that side. So over here, here, down along the back, uh, gives the ability to provide some of the par on-street parking and not conflict with driveways. And we recognize that Drive D in particular is a little tricky because you know, you've got the driveways and the, and the house on both sides. And we really mapped out, there's really like three spots in, in between six of the houses that you could probably have uh, some on-street uh, uh, ability to park. Um, but in total, we estimated about 35 on-street spaces um, could be accommodated. Um, and the, uh, i trying to think, the... Um, Construction management will have to deal with that. We hadn't. I, I, we got this a little bit late in the day, so we weren't able to check everything or gather everything. And and as I said, at Seaconk, it might be, it might be the things. What can I do to make that intersection a little bit safer, <coughs> as opposed to um, changing that level of service? I, I don't know if you have the room on Seaconk to to really kick out. I will say this: that any of our traffic on Seaconk is is related to the right turn. So the right turn is usually the least um, impacting movement at any of these intersections. So we're, in fact, we're probably improving 
because we're we're increasing the amount of right turns to come out of there. If you can, if you can uh, <laughs> imagine that. Yeah. But, but anyway, so so we'll take a you know quick look through just see if there's some safety aspects that can be improved and 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 maybe maybe there's something uh, that can the town can consider down the road. Gino, do you have anything to add to this? No. Walter, do you have any no. questions? No. Michelle. No, you answered my question, which was um, when you start to look at it through the U.S. Census journey versus, you know, the true actual condition, what kind of impacts it may have. And so you, you answered that through your... Uh, the absolute magnitude be is small because the number of vehicle trips is relatively small. Yeah. And I actually like the idea of looking at it both ways, you know. Um, you know, one that's more actual and then one that would be more, you know sort of data driven yeah uh, mr. Scully's right you you can get the origins and destinations but how you assign them to the network requires some knowledge of the local area yeah. so. <coughs> question for you the in, on 106 where the uh, units are on both sides of the street uh, there's when a vehicle parks on the street it, it narrows the uh, available street for traffic right that's correct uh, however on the outside there uh, adjacent to the lower two lots there belong to other people is there room to to widen the street so that uh, you're not faced with that issue over here yes there's, there's a swale there as I recall but uh, I don't know whether there's, there's room to, to widen the street. Well, I'll leave that well you know, for we could ask whether or not because because that that subject has come up several times in the past uh, is there enough room in this entire development to widen it to 24 feet we could yes okay uh, uh, and, no. and I'll uh, just I add to that uh, having I'll looked at um, the parking situation in more detail I think we'd recommend that I think the 24 <laughs> feet is advisable yeah, the problem I, uh, is going to be uh, where this is a private uh, subdivision property is uh, having the uh, no police patrols and neighbors disciplining uh, the parking limits. So how do you tell your neighbor to tell his mother-in-law to move his car, her car? So that, that's probably the only thing I see. That uh, I raised the issue, but I don't know what the answer is. So you could put something in the homeowners association documents. Right. But the um, just a couple things on on the um, it's probably easier to enforce the parking issue with the association than it is on the public side mm -hmm. um, but um, that said you got 22 feet um, a parking a, a parallel park car is gonna be six to seven feet in width so there is room to easily get past e even a vehicle uh, a truck um, fire apparatus could get by a parked vehicle on the street so the, there isn't a, an essential need to widen it to 24 feet. Well, and remember, I, and I think the berm it's itself takes up a lot of space. So the, the travel way that you're driving on <coughs> turns out to be about 22 feet. We're proposing a Cape Cod berm, so that would allow... Of course you are. <laughs> to turn up so it's 22 plus the berm. So Oh, plus the berm. That's what my oh, understanding okay. is. So, and that's so I, th I think it comes down to a balance of, <coughs> again, internally it's going to be low volume. I mean, everything that we've talked about tonight is everything funneled out to the main drive. Internally, the volumes are less. And I think it's just going to be probably a balance between impervious surface and, and uh, paved surface. Uh, yeah. and, and 22 feet can handle it. 24 feet is fine. You know, um, I don't have a major preference. Uh, the last thing on the parking I, I forgot to mention was my understanding is these units are designed to be two bedrooms, which means it could be two bedrooms or one bedroom functioning. So you may end up, in fact, with a lot less parking. It's not the standard, probably not what ITE, even the six data points has. Probably correct. Um, so again, it just to give you a you know, maybe a little bit more of a sense of some comfort on in terms of the parking demand and the ability to meet it, I, I think that is a factor too. Yeah, the, the flip side, or another issue though, is that the site is laid out with stacked parking. In other words, that there are two parking spaces per unit, but one's in back of the other, one's in the ground. Yeah. And you may find some people who find it more convenient to park on the street as opposed sure. to 
shuttling their cars back and forth. So that may be another reason to be a little bit over cautious. And I think maybe that extra couple of feet of pavement, although I'm the last person to want a lot of pavement on a site, but in this instance, I think maybe public safety trumps yeah. the aesthetic. And what about winter issues, conditions? Well, snow plowing. Significantly worse. Right. Well, I know in our house, we have three people living there, three cars. When there were four people living there, there were four cars. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. I don't know how your houses are, but that's the way ours is. And John, did you have any comments on the uh, on the traffic? No, I'm happy report? with it. Andrea, I think I have more of an observation. You don't need to comment on it um, for Tom. And Mr. Scully said that the roundabout, you know, closes down when the trains come in. And the trains come in during the peak commuting hours, and it really does close down. And the and the um, the traffic backs up close to this spot in in the commuting hours. Um, so, you know, 48 cars in the evening in a commuting hour when when the train is coming on a regular basis more frequently than the other times and the roundabout shuts down when the train is there it could i i'm surprised that i'm surprised you guys considered that you know fine it it takes care of itself because to the average person i don't want to have any more traffic jumping into that backup because there's no place for them to go it's backed up for how long? 15 minutes no. an hour? No. 10 minutes an hour? Like maybe a minute or it two. No, because no, it takes me longer to walk down from the train station than it does, because I'm one of those commuters that parks right next to this site. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's traffic backed up the entire time it takes me to walk. All right, I'll just say what my observations are. Um, and so I'm not a and traffic engineer. I'm just observing. No, and that's, and that's fine. And your perception an observation could be different than mine. Right. Um, but I am down through here an awful lot. Um, I have a habit of coffee down here. And, right. and, and many times I come out and the gate's down. Um, what tends to happen, and I don't have a good graphic. There, there's an aerial in the, in the report. But what tends to happen is the gate comes down. And it, it is, in fact, only down about a, a couple of minutes at most. Um, and traffic going in the northbound direction on Rockwood obviously stops at the gate and backs up towards the roundabout. And what, what generally happens, because I'm coming from Franklin, and I'm not going left on Rockwood anyways, I'm going straight through. Yeah. Um, other traffic on Union coming northbound, they just stop. They know they can't go anywhere. They stop at the church. Uh, and we proceed through going that way, or westbound traffic proceeds through westbound to southbound proceeds through and the roundabout is not in fact blocked there is queuing I'm not saying there's not queuing and there's queuing coming southbound on Rockwood when the gates go down as well when the gates go up it does process and clean up pretty quickly because it's around if it was a signal it'd be like Framingham downtown Framingham uh, and th and that is a lot a lot worse and it takes a lot longer to to get rid of everyone what we did was uh, we saw that in the morning there's uh, two trains that come in going towards Boston at 7.15 and 7.59 oh and that don't forget the 10 of 7 very popular <laughs> right but uh, we're looking at 7 to 9 and uh, you know that peak period and yes you're, you're right I mean that you're going to have that and and that's somewhat of a trade-off uh, of having the benefit of a train station in town center to go anywhere towards Boston. Uh, but our experience in watching it, I mean, we were out here counting it. We were, I, I'm down here, as I said, I've, I've gone through this for years and, and I'll, I'll sit, sit there and just watch. So I know it happens and I know traffic does queue up, but they do leave the circle open to a large part for people to proceed. Um, Probably the bigger problem is taking the left to get into Duncan, um, but the drive-through is being improved, um, and I think that will have more of a positive impact on things in the center traffic probably than anything else. Um, 
And, and so I, I understand. And, and from a regular, per, you know, you hear all the time and you see it and you come out at 6.50 or, you know, you're coming out at that time. I'm coming you're in during, I'm using it during the peak hours. You're going to You're going to be there, right? So my, you know. So we could be, we could be talking about the, obs the observation is that the rotary continues to move and I'm talking about the traffic bu building up Main on street, Main Street up towards the rotary. and not moving. Right. Yeah. And then all the cars want to come into it. So I. Oh, Ray, did you, on on did you have any comments on this? Take a right in the gate. Did you have any comments on this? They can't go anywhere. No, I, I think this traffic study revealed what I thought was going to happen. This is going to be a very minimal impact on the uh -huh. site, and that uh, the, the parking. I think you're, you're right on. With at least my gut feel on the parking is that you have a situation where you could use more parking, and I think it would be appropriate to add more parking to this site. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with adding more, but when I had looked to see what was required of other developments, and I counted how many spaces were required per unit, um, I had forgotten completely about how many there were in this development. And it turns out that this development matched exactly what the other developments were required to have. <coughs> so we're going to open this up to the public. So if you have any comments, identify yourself and stick to the topics that we've discussed tonight. And use the microphone. And use the microphone. <laughs> so do we have any comments or questions? Yes. Uh, yeah. Hi, Marcotte, 101 Main Street, Norfolk. Um, I just want to submit this picture that I took during the peak hour of traffic that which it goes, it goes beyond 108 Main Street down to my, down way past my house. Um, so I just want to. Okay, you can give that to Betsy. She can uh, take that. This is the front, and this is looking at that, and that's the peak hour. Okay. Is the time on that? Is there a time stamp I didn't put on time, that? It was like six. It was yeah, six make sure you have the time on there. 6 p.m.? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, Peter Diamond, 84 Seekonk Street. In the last meeting, you asked the applicants to go in front of the ZBA for the decision on the 16 bedrooms. Uh, we're not discussing uh, that tonight. We, you know, that we're, we're sticking with what we've discussed <coughs> tonight. Well, I thought it was okay. pertinent to the application. In well, front it, of isn't, you. It, it isn't because w when they came before us the last time, that's when they came in with the, the PMLD, which, which bypasses the ZBA. I'm We're talking about the site plan tonight. You continued the PMLD. No. Well, that they came to us with that before they actually submitted an application for it. So we've seen it already. That's why they stopped going before the, the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. There's a question back there. I heard all the... Mary Shivers, 109 Main Street. I heard all the traffic going across Seekonk and Needham Street in six seconds. I live at 109 Main. <coughs> Took me over five minutes to get out of my driveway. I never heard anything about the traffic that goes up and down Main Street. At night, I couldn't get out of my driveway if I wanted to be between four and six. Does he, do, did he do any study on Main Street or just these crossroads? Well, I don't know if that's actually part of the uh, traffic type study. Could you comment on that, whether or not y you can comment on uh, how much time it takes people to get in, in and out of their driveways? Well, I'm not talking about my driveway. I'm talking about the traffic that goes up and down Main Street. He never mentioned that. Well, yeah, he did. We, we, we've asked what the total counts were during the, the peak traffic times. Well, then he talked too low. I didn't hear him. Oh. But... I even asked how many uh, the cars are there at how peak traffic. Do you it's 928, I think, is what I saw on the on the uh, on the board there when he uh, You're sorry, put it you up. Hear it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Any other uh, questions? What was that? Uh, I I have a question. Christina Gleason, oh, 249 Main Street. 
Um, you say, what was the time period? How long was the measurement made for the 900 cars? W that was a morning measurement. Was that correct? Is that one hour, two hours? How long is that, that is, time? That is the peak 60 minutes in the morning peak period. So that would be during, occurring between 7 and 9, but the peak 60 minutes within that time period. Two hours? One hour. One hour at the peak. Between 7 and 9, there's a one hour period where the peak is. So 900 cars go by in one hour. Right. So that's more than one a minute. On Main Street, correct. Yep. Okay, thank you. The one a, a minute, just to clarify, is the amount of cars being added to that volume from this new site. And what percent would that be? Less than 5%. Yeah, it was a 2.3% and 3.5% or something. Okay, there's a question over here. Do you have a microphone? I do. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, Ron, we're both 69 Main Street. A uh, question relative to the traffic study. Could you tell me if um, you differentiate within the traffic study about the type of vehicle, for example, a semi truck versus a or, or, yeah, and landscapers, for example, trucks hauling trailers, 53-foot uh, trucks, um, gasoline trucks servicing the center of town, et cetera. That's so a real good question. You differentiate. Do you differentiate, or is it part of an equation? This one there. This one, here. This one right here. <coughs> yes, our traffic counts differentiate between uh, type of vehicles, so heavy vehicles versus passenger cars, <coughs> and the analysis will take into account uh, for the critical movements that, that volume. It doesn't differentiate whether it's a gasoline truck or a no, landscape. No, but it would be a large truck, heavy Just truck. large or small. Correct. Okay. Yes, go right ahead. So may I ask then, statistically, do you count a sedan? One third the size of a semi truck in your study. Well, there's correction factors in the in the analysis models. There's correction factors. So if we had <coughs> for a particular turn, if there were five percent trucks, that would be considered a heavy truck, and there's correction factors that account for its ability to accelerate, its ability to turn, its so those factors are built in. Okay, of the 900 vehicles in any one given hour, did you pull out of your accumulation of vehicles, did you pull out the 53-foot trailers plus the cab, the, you know, the, the sand trucks from all the various okay. companies around here? I'm uh, just uh, curious. Well, all I'm going to say is, uh, one more time. Sure. Our counts included classifying types of vehicles we don't differentiate between an oil truck or a trailer or a landscaper, I but we know a truck is a truck, um, and they're going to be a certain size, which then would kick into heavy vehicle, large vehicle, and the factors are already built into the models, and we apply whatever that percentage is for whatever critical movement it is at an intersection uh, as, uh, uh, that we're analyzing, and then that factor adjusts for that. And in the end, it, it converts everything to passenger car equivalents. So a trailer truck might be two vehicles or three Kay. vehicles, That's depending, what I'm on, depending on where you are, what you're doing, and, right. and the type of movement it's Okay. Doing. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Nancy Kahn is Everett Street. Um, this traffic study is about whatever is developed up there, with the exceptions of we don't know how many houses are going to be on each lot. That was an application to my understanding that was presented tonight, but is not being heard. So I'm sorry, but I'm a little confused about where we are with what application. The original application is no longer applied. We have a brand new site plan. So the it's a brand new. I'll explain that this, it, it's all a continuation. It's just adding a PMLD special permit to what was already put before the board. So number of units stayed the same. What's that? Two number different yeah, things. Yeah, the number of units stayed the same. So what happens is that when we go and read the, uh, the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, it appears as if 
um, a standalone residential development cannot occur unless the special permit was already in hand prior to the first advertising of the zoning change. So we have to get a confirmation from town council as to whether or not that's absolutely true. And if that's true, then only mixed use uh, developments can be put in the upper or lower B1 district, which means a commercial component. Yes. Mr. Chairman, just to follow up on that, uh, my no, name is Warren Baker. I was very recently engaged uh, to represent the, uh, the applicant, so uh, I'm part of the newest person in this room. But to follow up on the question of whether or not uh, the, the permit was, was uh, grandfathered or we have freeze rights with regard to it, what is your procedure or guidance with regard to, you're looking for town council to give you an answer. This, I see, is a little bit more complex than the standard read because uh, it has a number of different elements in it with regard to the bylaw as well as what was submitted. Um, normally, or, or other situations, it's common for me to talk with town council, at least give him my opinion, either submit it so the board can take a look at it. What do you usually like? What's your guidance? Mm -hmm. Well, let me have a conversation with town council before we advance it any further. If you want, you can leave your contact information with Betsy. So if if uh, if town council would like to speak to you, then I'll I'll uh, let them have that contact information. We do have to get permission from the town administrator. Yes. Uh, Peter Diamond, 84 C. Conk Street. I have a question regarding landscaping. It's a large project, which will probably have professional landscapers there. And what provisions are made for parking of the landscaping vehicles while they're doing work? Has that been considered in the traffic parking analysis well, on the project? Let's just say that I don't even think that we've, have we even seen a landscaping plan yet? I don't think we have. No, he's, have talking, he's talking parking, though. Yeah, I know, but, you know, we, ha I don't e we ha haven't even. <coughs> no, I think we see a plan. We've had some discussions about it, including uh, plantings to prevent uh, headlights coming out of there from <coughs> reflecting into the uh, windows of the people across the street, but we have not seen a, a, a landscape plan that I'm aware of. No. no. Do you know if there were, uh, has there been a uh, landscaping plan submitted for this? Uh, no, I don't think No? We, we had uh, submitted a plan based on the prior layout. Yeah. Oh, street oh, okay, trees yeah, right, right. Some uh, buffer screenings along the property lines, fences, things like that, but uh, so things, things have changed. changed. Just so I'm sure, your, your concern is that once this is developed and people are living there, that potentially the Housing Association may employ a professional landscaper to maintain the grounds, and That's you're correct. concerned about where they're going to park while they're maintaining. And the safety to be impacted by having them park there. Okay. Along the I think oh. that is 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 a, a component of the overall parking strategy that we've been talking about tonight. I don't think it would be one of the the driving factors of um, the layout and. <coughs> quantity of parking um, but I think it would be addressed in sort of we're talking a lot about you know the width of the road the amount of guest parking allowances of, of um, number of cars people may be allowed to be owned they're allowed to park on the street not on the street but I, and I think that that would be kind of considered in the realm of that overall kind of parking strategy S snow removal all that other stuff so if this goes forward this will be six different uh, condo associations yeah. Well, that's what I was wondering is, um, is it, it, they would not be individual homeowners. It'd be each condo association. Well, well let's, let's, let's uh, follow up on that. Can floor. they be is combined it, into a single condo? Yeah. I don't know why not. Yeah, they yeah, can certainly yeah, they, yeah. structure it legally however they want. It would span more than one lot, but I don't think there's a prohibition on that. Yeah. Or we may have an opinion. On, on number of condo associations. Tom, is it in the bylaws that in a PMLD not. like this, there has to be, where they're all using common uh, infrastructure, there has to be uh, separate condo associations because there's six separate lots, but they all have to have cross connections, so each one is 
totally liable for the <coughs> upkeep of all the other infrastructure uh, common areas? As far as I know, you can have a common <laughs> homeowners association for the entire PMLD. For all six? I believe so. In fact, I think it's almost the opposite, that they would be required to have one because they do have in interconnected facilities. Makes that, sense. Yeah. yeah. I think you could even, it would, lead, it would at least have to be two for the two separate projects, but you might be able to have a condition that there be one overall for both projects. So there's one entrance drive, and it's the only way to exactly. get in and out. Well, so let's, let's, let's leave topic. the whole PMLD conversation out of it and talk about it as if it's oh, two it's separate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> two separate developments. Um, yes. Hi, Elizabeth Whitney, 26 Valley Street, Pondville. Um, the next meeting, it has been continued, um, the PMLD discussion, to the 10th of June. Am I correct in assuming that a detailed <coughs> drainage and sewage report will be submitted at that time? I imagine it should be more advanced. Will it be more advanced by the time you come back at the beginning of June? The, the septic and the drainage? We'll look, uh, yeah, we'll be working on it. Oh, okay. Has a drainage and septic report been submitted already? The original plan Which has preliminary okay. septic and drainage in okay. it. Okay. It's <coughs> the switch over. Okay, right. good. Thanks. The, uh, and, and remember that the original plan had more units on it than this plan has. <coughs> Anybody else? Okay. I'm going to continue this to... June 10th, do we have a motion? I move that we continue the public hearings <coughs> for 106 and 108 Main Street um, to June 10th at 8.15. 8.15 and 8.30. Second. Yeah. 8.15 8.30, right. Second? Okay. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Good. Yeah, we did 106 and 108 at 8.15 and 8.30. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, Tom, this is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, see, I never see this. I always see this. Yeah, she walks down here. Uh, yeah. You've got a lot of seconds on a lot of other boards, like though. Second, yeah, yeah, too many. Yeah, too many everything. Oh, okay, 17 Fredrickson <laughs> Road. <laughs> Dan Winslow called me about this. He called me from California to ask you me about were, this. Um, what was he asking? You about his uh, A and R on Fredrickson. Why, why did he ask to continue it? Huh? Wonderful why does he ask to continue it? Oh, did he really ask to? Oh, yeah, did, did you? Not a someone found something. Yeah, there were two minor, two minor things, two and minor you said things. to forget about. It, let's just yeah, go ahead with it. Maybe he didn't know that uh, you had recommended to oh. just go ahead and sign it. Did he get Betsy? Did he give a reason why he wanted to uh, postpone it to uh, June tenth? Yes. Oh, okay. Who brought this? They may be redrawing the lot lines. And has this been filed with Town Clerk? Who brought it? And they never did. No, I told my daughter. Okay. Well, so the clock. That yeah, that is good because now there's no <laughs> 21 days that we have to worry about running out. Oh, oh, okay. So we don't have to worry about that one. Okay, we do have to we do have to um, vote to postpone it to 610 at. Oh, do we have to for an ANR vote to postpone it, or do we just postpone yeah. it? It's not open. Oh, that's true. It's not a hearing. Right. We'll just skip it. Um, Hampton Road, cost to complete. Ah. So I, I have to thank you people on that flag up at the T-Mobile Tower. It's so beautiful, my subdivision. I'd like to get a Kini Palm, like an insignia little Banner. flag. And put it, yes, and put it <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, is it really? After looking at that other thing, half attached for five years, it's just, wow. <coughs> I now put the landscaping, it. I'm all set, I'll you sell out. You want to say the Pledge of oh. Allegiance every time you go now? Yeah, has it? <laughs> what? It hasn't been landscaped? The flag no, oh. no, the flag is about there. Oh, okay. set. It's all graded off, yeah. so. Small things. 
I don't think we have the Hampton Road here. Do, do we, we have a um, a bond oh, estimate? Oh, it's postponed. Oh, it's postponed. Oh, that's postponed. Too. Postponed also. It's Jeez. a big yes. letter, Steve. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. So why I'm did we get home on time? <laughs> why did Winslow postpone? No, that he's adjusting lot lines. Oh. So Toils and Farm. Has anyone been up there? I have. Did you see what um, what they were talking about when when um, yeah. we got the original email? Yep. Yeah. That it it looks like it's going to be incredibly difficult to hide it. But why do they have to have bright yellow bollards there? Why can't they be green or something so that they don't see stand green. out? <laughs> they're, but they're they're off the, the behind the sidewalk. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's non-negotiable? Camouflage? Can we do a camouflage color? <laughs> but there's no the vehicles The fact that it's a isn't enough. Who's going to hit it? It has to be a bollard yeah, that you avoid. Who's going to hit it? <laughs> who's going to uh, hit it? Yeah, who's going to hit it? How many, how many teenagers have you raised? <laughs> Neither of my kids have gone that far off the road. Uh, <laughs> haven't they totaled several cars? But even so, if they're going to go off the side of the road, if it's yellow or green, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> No, why do they have to be yellow? Can't they be? Can't they be uh, hidden microphone. a little bit? Oh, These guys, oh uh, microphone. Yeah, yeah, microphone here. I guess it is. So. Well, <laughs> it's only a discussion. It's uh, not really a public this hearing. This hasn't happened yet. What is two forty? I don't know that there is a code. It's supposed to be visible, readily visible. It needs to stand out. Typically, they're orange, yeah. so yellow is a little break from that. Uh, green is never going to work. Because that would get lost with any landscape that you. Well, would that's have. the point. Well, your right. point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my <laughs> point. <laughs> From their perspective, they want to make sure you see it so they don't hit the transformer. I like yellow. I don't see much of against yellow. Well, it's a w w if you g have you been there? No. Oh, you have to see it. I have some pictures. It's, it's not what I we expected. We have pictures in our report. Yeah. You got some pictures? Well, they're not in color. I have yeah, some but bigger I get pictures. The, I see you can see clearly the yellow. <laughs> you can see the contrast here. Yeah. When when we when we made our decision <laughs> on this, <laughs> they were they were significantly you know like our decision called it for it to be Thank really you. hidden. <laughs> it was. I, I don't find it offensive or not offensive. It, it, it's it's necessary and, and, and quite candidly, it's it's probably the lesser of the two colors that I would have. I mean, we've painted uh, burgundy, we've painted them. We'll dark green. We've had no. dark green is going to get lost against the uh, the dark green transformer. transformer. And, and the idea is to make sure that you don't hit the transformer. Are there vehicles going mm. near that transformer? It's a, these are on the other side of the sidewalk. Power company oh, for, for, for servicing. Um, somebody accessing the, the booster station will also be pulling into that driveway. I mean, clearly the, there's a reason that the power company wants to have bollards set so nobody hits them, whether it's on purpose or not. With those we, can, we can bring that, that bus driver from Newton you can find a way to hit it. With those bullets <laughs> here, <laughs> is it impossible to hit the transformer with those bullets there? Um, pretty much. Even if you don't see them, you can't hit the transformer yeah, because uh, uh, they're... A, a, a standard vehicle is not yeah. going to get through those. Okay. So his point is they don't have to be visible because you're never going to... That's my point. <laughs> That's his point. Yeah. You, That's just my point. you just convinced him to turn them green. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, really. <laughs> well, well, but do you want him to hit the bullets? That's we the problem. We don't care. <laughs> Well, you care because the ballers are going to get dinged and knocked up, and then they're going to look like I don't know too, and they could even potentially well crack and fall over. Well, well these aren't plastic ballers, right? right? It's cement, they're, right? They're just, they're just a line, and that's just just a cover over. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so it is a it is a solid. Oh, yes, yeah. the intent is to stop. It will stop Anything regardless of the color. It mm -hmm. will stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> typically, typically Dunkin' Donuts use plastic ones. Not filled. Uh, They're not filled. They're filled. That some of them in are intended to be able to be knockoverable for emergency vehicle yeah. access. Yeah, that you must be those. Choice, that you're must be those. You're the butter, so you should. Most of the Dunkin' Donuts, the, the highest. I don't. I'm not really in a butter. I just okay. happen to be. I'll there. tell you later. The closest. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't hit it. Yeah. I didn't hit it with a car. I know. We didn't clarify that with a car. I didn't hit it. I didn't hit it with a car. But I'll tell you later. 
Because well, I, a I motorcycle will get through this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. I think what happened was when we were first discussing Can this, we were talk oh, talking about a pumping station. We weren't talking about a transformer exactly. at all. Right. So that wasn't even part of okay. the discussion. And the pumping station was going to be uh, was going to be a building. Is hidden, it's way back, and it, it could easily be hidden by landscaping. But all of a sudden, this showed up. Okay, can I? Can so I? Uh, that's a different issue. Mm. Can I just take five minutes and maybe refocus the whole discussion from the mm -hmm. beginning and yeah. summarize it and see where we are, how we got to this? Um, okay. Yeah. Some time ago, we started. Uh, we, we went through this uh, this iteration of of a uh, of a water booster station. It was originally an underground structure. Um, we wanted it above. Which was on the other side of the street, further up the street. Uh, DPW did not want to have an underground structure. It's an access issue. It's a question of having safety for, for personnel, uh, whether you have to have two people or one person walking in or out. We got it. We understood it. Uh, they clearly made it to uh, uh, that, that we needed an above ground. We, we ended up with this above ground as, as the best location for uh, the booster station within the site, within the subdivision, as it had been approved. This is. This is a fix, and after the fact fix from where it was originally done when you guys saw the subdivision. As part of that, you can Did hang you on to these? those for now. Uh, as part of as part of that approval, we had um, and and I dealt directly with with Tom Houston as to what else, what input did this this board have on that booster station? Now this this existed in the drawing, which was black and white, and it existed based on. Uh, the desires and the requirements of the power company. Uh, there was some discussion about turning the transformer sideways so we would have, they would have access from the driver rather <coughs> than from the street. Power company was very quick to say no, we want access to this at any given time from the street. We can't depend on somebody plowing or cleaning a driveway. So the, that's how this turned out. There was a little discrepancy, and I'll give you that, um, between NSTAR's engineering and maintenance. Engineering is saying that, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm going to qualify something here. I'm not sure. I'm, 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 I certainly don't know for sure, but I don't know if they could read the plan that they got where clearly this board had asked for a stockade fence and for Arborvitis. Uh, if you look at the location of those, it was always between the transformer and the street for the reasons that we've just heard, to hide it. Um, when it gets to maintenance and then start, they want access to this. They don't want to go around the fence. They don't want to go through bushes. They don't go through arborvitaes. They want to see it. Clearly a conflict with what you, what this board wanted to do. This has been asked. So here we are at this point. We have, and, and you know, to look, at, uh, to look at some of those pictures, you will see that, that the developer has taken it upon himself to do a lot of landscaping on the sides. You see plenty of spruce trees on, on both sides as I believe four and four um, but the front is, is, is lacking. What we would like to suggest and something that, that again I, I, I suggested in the letter is that perhaps we provide a couple of arborvitaes or something else of your desire and it would be one on each side of the, uh, of the two front bollards so that if you're coming from, from one side you can not see, necessarily see that one from the other side you won't see the other one. And that's not hiding the uh, the transformer, but that's probably the only thing that I see we can do that still allows the uh, power company to access that transformer. What what goes on with with the remainder of the the land there? I mean, it, there's not going to be a paved driveway. It's going to be gravel, right? Um, it's funny you bring that up because it was intended to be. It was approved as a gravel. There uh, there's some discussion about um, paving it for ease of maintaining access. Discussion like where? Not with, discussion with, here? With the, not with this board, but with, uh, with DPW. They need to maintain access to this. Are they the ones requesting the paving it? They're the ones talking about it. So it's coming from town? Correct. Well, it's not an accepted roadway yet, so it's right. something that they have to discuss with us. Mm -hmm. But I'm just but wondering rate, about, well, yeah, probably. yeah. What about all of the rest of what appears to be open? Can that be grassed? Can something else be done to make it at so least attempt who's to got blend the in? Uh, Betsy's got it. Okay. <coughs> Can 
Maybe because it appears as though it's just a wide open expanse of gravel. Can so something be done? Well, that, 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 was, that was part of DPW's the idea wish of what you're to saying have is maybe grass. The whole thing, in yeah. In front of here. So maybe this becomes paved well, eventually. Well, let's, and then let's all go of this back. Let's, let's go back. I need to look at this picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In this picture, you can see the sidewalk. Yeah. Right. The sidewalk is going to continue. Uh huh. So again, the idea and of grass with a sidewalk through well, it. Well, what you have is that, and, and let's look at this other picture, that sidewalk is going to be running right down by this, the, the bottom of the riprap. Mm. Um, can this green continue? Instead is it of possible? Riprap? Yeah, yeah. Can it continue here? Well, up to, the the up to where the driveway is. Reason. Just to get it so at least it tries the to... The intent, and you see the difference between the two pictures. They were taken at different dates. Yeah, this doesn't have this the riprap. This does rap not have it. the riprap. The riprap was a, a, again, a DPW, and I seem to be pointing the finger that way. I don't mean to do it. Why in, is there riprap? Yeah, why is there yeah. riprap? Yeah. For stability, for stability, because if you step on that, uh, if you stepped on that stone, it, was, it, was, it would move under your feet. So erosion control? I wouldn't you call it erosion control as much as just having a stable slope that you can step on and step up to the level of the of the transformer. Well, that's why we were saying grass. Grass would stabilize it also. Sure. Yeah, I guess. So if we could just have grass up to the level, up to where the transformer is, at least it will... Blend in. Yeah, it'll have it blend into all its surroundings a little bit. Do they have any objection to having grass up to this point? I should not that I know of. No, I, I think it's it's probably more a drainage issue than anything else. Um, just to, to 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 bring you up to what this area was was blasted rock. Can so I draw on this? Of course you can. <laughs> can I say no? Yeah, of course you can. You can. <laughs> no, no. Uh. Bring this down straight. Hmm. Where? This Bring this it down so it's a straight driveway. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, oh, well, paint I Paint the yellow. Huh? Paint the yellow. And paint the yellow, yeah. We've got to get something that's a little bit better than the yellow. <laughs> Light green. Green with white stripes. Yeah. Better than yellow. So that all this becomes grass yeah, in Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all this grass in here. Acceptable. And then that could be uh, it seems like it paved. Keep changing. I I, <laughs> don't, I don't know if they have. So in the end, kind of add it so that this all becomes grass. Yeah, this all becomes grass. My, my guess is it's nothing. That just so the board. Board. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm waiting for the camouflage to come next, but it's it's <laughs> that obviously is not is not. So <laughs> grass <laughs> that <laughs> leaves step on them. They, these these bollards are not the property of NSTAR. They're yours. They're the property of. They the weren't mandated by NSTAR, but. No, we own them. I'm sure they're not going to want to maintain them. If they break, we'll get to fix them. Yeah. Because so um, sure he, he started the... the transformer will remain the property of Enstar. Right? But these bollards are yours. The bollards are... I'm not sure of that. I think that the bollards may actually be part of the, the whole package right there. For Enstar. Right, because, I mean, the, the, the conversation sense. began when um, Carlos... Yes. ...said um, that there's a there's a disagreement between what NSTAR is trying to achieve and what the planning board is trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And NSTAR is not here tonight. NSTAR so is we could tell them what we're trying to achieve. Yes. Well, But from a public <laughs> safety, you cannot. You right, cannot and I think we're trying to, to work with the condition. So the condition is the condition, and we're not arguing yeah. that. But what we're trying to do is just enhance the aesthetics around Grass the condition. It's re really as simple as that. Safety. Just to make it so that well, it feels more blended, more connected. Because it, it just looks like it was lopped off and not really considered. It, it truly is not finished, but I, I understand your right. point. We weren't planning to, to, to grasp that, and, and that's, that's something we can look at. Uh, obviously, uh, I, don't, I can't think of a reason why you couldn't grasp that. Um, I would like, though, the liberty to follow up with, the, with NSTAR about the color of these bullets before we agree to any other color. Well, because sure. I don't really know that we may I not have a choice. Don't, I personally yes. don't feel that strongly about it. That's, I'm just one of the board, though. Well, <coughs> the thing is, when you when you pull in off of uh, Maple Street, mm -hmm. 
it's a big surprise when mm -hmm. you see it because it's it's larger than you think it is, mm -hmm. and the bullets really stand out. So th you can that's see it from a distance. Yeah, yeah. You were saying though that that's you the might. Idea. <laughs> well, you were saying you may be willing <coughs> to also put some arborvitaes on either side. We were looking to do uh, one here and, and one, one here. So that may help too. Yeah, that'll help too. Sure. That'll, that'll help a lot. lot. You're that'll help a lot. The street, yeah. you're yeah. certainly not going to see this one. You will see this one. Right. As you get close to that, that that would make a big improvement right. I mean, because this is a just a wide open space that that's what the problem is it's interesting that it you, you know one arborvitae is thin and tall you you kind of want short and fat well yeah it doesn't necessarily you have to be arborvitae what yeah but when, they, when there was four arborvitaes it created a hedge mm -hmm. when you put a single one it creates a little spire so you, you really need to tip over and <laughs> yeah. Put a box for a hedge around there. So it that's what the, that's what the four the four was looking for a hedge. Yeah, but I, I, I can't I can't hmm? have the power company is not going to walk over there. Mm -hmm. The front is going to be open. You, you yeah, they want it narrow. They want it, They don't want maintenance where it's going to be flopping out into. No, they, they their but you things. you're you're asking you're he's somebody's offering to the side to block the side views. Right. Keep the front open and right. block the side view. So block right. the whole side view. Yeah, Not yeah. Well, that's what we were originally right. asking for. Yeah. I understand what you're saying, but you know, couple that, couple that. Mm -hmm. Add that to these spruces that are running up. Yeah. And you already have on, on one side, on either side, no, on both sides. Yeah. On Do you see the spruces see coming up? On, on you, the don't you don't notice them. You don't notice them. Don't notice them now. Right, but you can see this. They're right here. They're right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. It's these these guys. These these will grow into place. These these are a distance back. Yeah. So, can you? Are you, will these ever block this view? No. I think you I have don't to get if so. you can get closer to those bollards. Well, that's why we suggested one here. And there certainly is room for another one here. Excuse me, if, uh, if I may. Yes. There, there are clearance requirements. Microphone, yep. Uh, yeah. And you need to clearance identify yourself, uh, sorry. My name is uh, Jeff Murray. I'm with the uh, site contractor. Uh, mm -hmm. There are clearance requirements. Ten feet is the uh, requirement for uh, uh, the distance at the front and four feet on the sideline. So any more than any more than one uh, arborvitae on either side would, I mean, would be uh, at the uh, retaining wall on one side, and on the other side, we would actually be into the drive driveway with, mm -hmm. where a service service okay. vehicle would yeah. pull in. So, or encroaching on that uh, <coughs> the, the safety factor with the uh, with the distance from the transformer itself. Four feet from four the feet outer from edge. Four feet from uh, the outer edge, and ten feet clear on the side of the doors of okay. the uh, transformer because it's a three-phase transformer. So, and at that distance, you'd be directly into the wall. So we would be talking about an arborvitae located just about right here, right. where this is. Right on the corner. Yeah. 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 She drew this up. Yeah. Did a good right job. Right? Yeah. Tip typically, I always say, are you sure you want to do arborvitae? Because yeah. I really don't like it. Right. They, they break right. apart. Right. That, that's what the problem is. Mean, right. 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 Short and fat. That's, that's where I was going. Too, too massive. Right. I think they, I think they get too big. They get too they, wide. They, can. Can they, get, they get wide. Well, yeah, you can trim them. You can trim them way back. Well, yeah. That would be nicer. But if you could recommend it's something to put on the corner. But arborvitae is not a good one because they, when they hit, when snow hits them, the branches all flop out like this and they tend to break. Dense form us you. I don't think they're dense and they're so wide. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have some beautiful salmon. Color it's going to be growing at least. Yeah. At least you know four so feet. Like Use come in everything from right. thirty feet high to a ground cover. So yeah. just yeah, pick one that's about three well, I, feet I, I, high. I, I, okay. You know, I, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm giving away something, but, but the intent clearly would be to, to get over the ball and perhaps get maybe as high as the the transform. As that's. that's Right. I yeah. Yeah. Higher than that as Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's Agreed. that is correct. That's great. So why don't we get a U? They have U's that grow. Columnar, right? Term, yeah. Columnar. Remember that. Columnar what? Columnar. related to a column. Columnar. Columnar. Yeah. If you want to go really narrow, they're fantastic. Yeah, I've usually said the other way. Narrow. 
I'm not saying you do. I'm just no, saying. No, we, we, weren't short <laughs> we went short and fat. I was just showing my knowledge of you. You want short and fat? <laughs> you want to call him? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we would short and fat, but still keep a four foot distance. Sounds like sounds like there's a lot of restrictions on on exactly what we, we don't give really necessarily products. have to hide it. Just distract it. the eye because that's what happens <laughs> as you come around the corner and you look right at it. You there's get a no way of avoiding it. Get a college shot from Insta. You mean from their interior designer? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like color windows. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I suspect they're going to give me one color. I know. And you're looking at it. Um, <laughs> we have another issue, and, and, and maybe this isn't your issue, but it is an issue to the project, and, and that is that we can't get a certificate of occupancy. We can't get Bob Bullitt to sign off on this until everything is done, including yeah, whatever yeah, it is we agree to do here today. Um, so the in clearly we'd like to move and be able to leave here and know what we're going to do and get it done so that we can, because with this comes occupancy for all the other units that are waiting to close. So the best thing for you to do is to do your plan with what we've said tonight, send it to, to Betsy. If you can do graphics, perfect. And with everything that you're proposing to change, including the name of the shrub or whatever that's going to go in there, where they're going to be located, how much grass is going to be in there, and whether or not you're planning on paving. Because then we'll discuss the paving part, because it, you, do, you are approved for a gravel drive. Right. So well, if I can at least poll you, wh 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 where do you stand on that paving? I mean, clearly well, we have an approved plan, and I, I, we haven't taken the, the, the position with DPW that, hey, we're not going to pave. We're, we've entertained it because they are going to own it. They are going to operate it. They, they and they're asking. Some right? yeah. and they're they asking. Well, the, if Bob wants it. Well, well Bob's, Bob, Bob should come care. and ask us it, if we would consider it instead Unders of just. Un uh, unders understood, <laughs> but you understand also the other side of this picture is that if Bob comes in and asks, Bob will have to find a way to pay, as opposed to the developer getting it done. <laughs> I'm not putting one against the other. I'm just saying that if you disjoint the, 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 the way that this process takes place, that's what's going to happen. We have an approved plan. We provided it. It's a gravel drive. Mm, we also talked, I mean, now that we're talking about other things, we talked we'd about We'd like to be not able to move forward with our CEOs. This should yes. not hold us up. That's what we're saying. All right. So, so you, I'd like the board to vote to say that we can get and t tell Bob that we're all right with that. We'll submit a plan to you that uh, um, that we can go back and forth with about uh, paving. I think the water department would like to have a little say in it too, and uh, we'll also check with the uh, the power company about the color of the of the uh, bullets, and we'll bring back some other stuff. But we'd prefer, we'd prefer not to have COs held up by this. How many houses? Uh, I got I got three or four pending right now. And how many are there after the three or four that are there? I don't know. How many more have we got there? Uh, well, we they're, they're not all going in right I now. The roads yeah, aren't yeah, finished yeah. yet. I can, <laughs> I can say 30, 35? Yeah, you did. You in Pulte's defense, uh, they had not turned over the open space parcel to us, which was a prerequisite before them getting building permits. And not to stop the project, even the Conservation Commission uh, took it on a promise. Yeah and let them get started, and we, it's all in good shape. So I have no doubt they'd finish this up. Oh, so so th they did turn over the parcel for the open space, or they, they did claim. not? No, they certainly did. Oh, they did. They oh, did okay. all the legwork in between, yes. Yeah. Well, this is not holding up the operation of anything. And they have a lot more lots. <laughs> they do have a lot more stuff. lots. And, you know, like, I, I would say. Some pretty minor. Yeah, yeah, it does seem like minor stuff to me. Yeah, I mean, considering minor. everything else that's going in there. I, I'd be inclined to say, yeah, I think I can take you at your word that you'll do this because it doesn't seem like an awful lot of work. But y you should try to press them on that. Call. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> that. That'll at least give us time. And, and then we can go time? back and yeah. forth on drive. We can come back a couple more times. You're lucky yeah. he well, was well, in the well, con -con I'm sitting yeah. here, <laughs> sitting here thinking, how many times have we stopped because the railroad gates come down and a freight train goes by uh -huh. and the cars are covered with, what, graffiti, right? When does that occur? Usually after midnight. What color do you suppose these are going to be after midnight? 
don't know. Better than yellow, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll be better than yellow. <laughs> Anybody else have a, a, a feel as though we should hold this up for, for no. the occupancy permits? Nah. No. I don't do you, think there's. Do you want to get the first iteration of the tonight's plan in as a point of you know good faith? You don't have good faith from us. This is this well, is nothing. This is, you this can is get to us tomorrow. This is all videotape. Really could get it to us tomorrow. And we've got a leverage you know, out there. We <laughs> <laughs> just have a What's leverage. We've got all the other options. Can you get the first plan to us tomorrow? We get a lot. Of I can get you the plan, but you know, you know we get a lot more. We could hold up on them if they don't yeah. follow through with this. Yeah. And that, yeah. that plan yeah. should go to the DPW. Yeah. We should be talking here. to a whole. Then we'll have something that's real. Is this really the only thing that's holding up Bob Bullock? From yeah. Yeah. Sheep is creepers. Okay. To his credit, there, there was a long, there was a bigger list. But we're, We've we're, taken we're care we're of done. everything. Oh, okay. This is what There's the training line. going on tomorrow with the DPW and the Water Department. That's part of it, but that's happening tomorrow yeah, morning. Okay. And yeah. Right. Yeah. okay. Well, we agree. Let's yeah. Close so this up. we'll send something to Bob Bullock, <coughs> saying that that you've promised to change it. According to, to this plan, with yeah. the smiley face. Yeah, we'll take that with us. Make a copy. Best I, I don't copy. know how to put that smiley face on the mm -hmm. drawing. That's what's <laughs> going to come out at night. So, so in order to run this around to the different departments to come back with something that's everyone's got looked at, I don't know, uh, Carlos, what a week or something? Well, like I, I certainly within a week we can do this. Well, I, the, I the think only other department that would have anything to do with it is uh, the, the well, highway we'll superintendent. Right? We'll go PPW. back to the we'll go back to the Bible company and see what we can do with that. Oh well, time. yeah, that's right. not a that's, that's not right. a board in this town so <coughs> so we're the only ones that you have to talk to <coughs> and uh, and we'll talk to we'll talk to the highway superintendent okay. ask him what he wants um, <coughs> before we get somebody in trouble this really started out and I use DPW but it was Phil McNulty from the water department um, he's working hand in hand with Bob McGee so that's why him ultimately he comes through Bob McGee mm -hmm. well isn't Bob McGee's boss yeah. 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 So it all comes back to Bob McGee. So we'll have to send a, a memo to uh, to Bob asking him. Bob Bullock. Bob Bullock. Bob McGee. McGee. Bob Bullock. Oh. Oh, and Bob McGee. You'll yeah, because we're going to ask about the, what you know his feelings on the on the paving and everything else. Okay. Um, because we hadn't even we hadn't even discussed that. Yeah, and you know they're really the the paving that they're talking about. I think is to the gate, not beyond the gate. So how many only feet, how many feet the is part that, that a truck would go on. How many on. feet into the, up the street? Is no, I, I think yeah. it's, yeah. it's something in the nature. About of ten, of ten to twelve feet. Oh, okay. You got a truck on there. Yeah. Right. It's just to get off the street and yeah. park there. I'm sure that's all they're looking for. It's a it's a maintenance issue. Yeah. But you know whatever you know we'll work with them. Whatever they. Okay. Okay. So you'll send a memo to Bob Bullock? Yes, we will. Say. Great. Thank you. Bob Bullock and Bob McGee. Sure. <coughs> yes. Day. Thank you very Different much. Memos, though. Right. Was, yeah. um, How's that car wash working? Earlier issue. The car what? wash is working. I actually ran my car through and came all clean. Account. A couple of little <sighs> spots and I don't have to come back. I thought it was. I thought we had voted on this. <laughs> there was a little controversy, but there was a, I was working on another car wash up north and they talked to each other. Was that an inspection account issue taken care of? What inspection account issue? Bob McGee was asking to have a. Was, that was taken care of. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yep, we're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. So one of the reasons Bob wanted to be there on a regular basis was so he could make these decisions. Right. Did. Uh, and so that's why that's why he makes these decisions in the field. I, did you ever uh, address their signs being on? property and yes they're not going to get any more lot releases as long as those signs are there uh, so can you draft something for um, for Bob Bullock that oh, that, sure that, that says that, that the uh, the planning board uh, has already discussed the issues with him as far as the landscaping and whatever our conditions were that we had on on that prior one trying to adapt our conditions to the Current state, or to end stars, to end stars uh, hmm. needs. All right. What else do we have here? Hampton Road. No. Next, next Postpone. Meeting. Next meeting. We're done. Oh, okay. That's right. What That's is right. What is two forty Dedham Street? It 
at the corner of Sharon's Ave. Yeah. Yeah. Is that Mr. Quigliari's? Uh? Yes, it's the I one that's was next no? to what the new Dunkin' Donuts is going <laughs> to be. Two, 240 is the Dunkin' Donuts. 242 oh. is Mr. Quigliari. Oh, that's right. That's right. right. Yeah. Property, so. so this is Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, yes. Thank you. Same building? Thank you. No, it, this, this is the property sure. that Did you Hugo have the charts? Tino, uh, this is, in the okay, end, did you have the charts in the building. back? Yes. Okay, and Quigliari's is the one this after the one to the left of it. Yes. Okay. okay. I thought that was the more important the one that was piece. built without inspections? Yes. That's the one. It's all being inspected now. Yeah, okay. Walter. Hot, yeah. I just, that's the extension. So, are we done? 240 Downing Street. Mm-hmm. Motion to adjourn? Yeah. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 See that? We are out of 10 o'clock. <coughs> this is good.